Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Miss Kim, and this is Miss Tiffany, and we will be your teachers today. Today we will be learning about Asia and India in a very important river called the Indus River. Today's lesson is titled the Indus River Valley, and I am so excited to learn about this beautiful river. By the end of today's lesson, we will be able to identify Asia as the largest continent with the most populous countries in the world. Then, we will locate Asia and India on a map or globe. Also, we will be able to explain the importance of the mountains in the development of early Asian civilizations. Next, we will be able to explain the importance of the Indus River for the development of a civilization in ancient times. And last, we will describe the key components of civilizations. This is going to be so interesting, so let's get started. In our lesson today, we will learn about ancient civilizations that began in India and China. Ancient civilizations are advanced societies, or ones that are very developed, have laws, and a written language. We will hear what life was like for people who lived in these ancient civilizations all those years ago. We will learn also about the, the inventions <laughs> created by these ancient or early civilizations inventions that are still used in Asia around the world today. In our previous lessons, we have learned about early civilizations of Maya, Aztec, and Inca. Located in America, as you can see here on the globe. We also learned about Egyptian civilizations formed on the continent of Africa and the Mesopotamian civilization formed on the continent of Asia. Civilizations in Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt developed around large rivers. These large rivers flooded and left behind rich soil for growing crops. But before we get started with our read aloud, let's go over some of our vocabulary words. Our first vocabulary word is Common. Repeat after me. Common. Common. Common means the most widely known or ordinary. Let's use it in a sentence. Almost every student in Mrs. Davis's class was out sick with the common cold. That was extraordinary work. Our next word is cultivate. Repeat after me. Cultivate. Cultivate. Cultivate means to grow and or tend to crops or plants. Let's use it in a sentence. Every summer, Tony and his mother would cultivate tomatoes and cucumbers in their garden. I absolutely love tomatoes and cucumbers. Me too, especially when I cultivate or grow them myself. Our next word is fertile. Repeat after me, fertile. Fertile. Fertile means rich in the materials or nutrients needed to produce many strong, healthy crops. Let's use it in a sentence. Because Trisha's farmland was so fertile, she always grew the biggest crops in the county. Our next word, Indus River. Repeat after me, Indus River. Indus River. The Indus River is a river at the center of the first civilization of Pakistan and India. Let's use it in a sentence. The Indus River flows through the countries of Pakistan and India. Miss Tiffany, can you locate the Indus River on the globe? I can. The Indus River, it runs down the middle between Pakistan and India. Excellent job. And our last vocabulary word for today is irrigation canals. Repeat after me, irrigation canals. Irrigation canals. Irrigation canals are ditches cut into the earth to direct water where needed. And let's use this word in a sentence. The Egyptians used the irrigation canals to move water from the Nile River to their crops. Have you ever seen an irrigation canal? No, I haven't but I absolutely would love to. Well, they still use them on farms in Mississippi, so you might get to see one one day. 
We are about to read a nonfiction story to learn about the ancient civilizations that began in India and China. Listen closely to this read aloud to find out if the civilization was developed around a large river like those in Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt. Look at this photo. Many important ancient civilizations were developed around large rivers. These rivers were very important to the ancient civilizations because they assisted with transportation, irrigation, and food. Do you know which river the continent and which continent the Egyptian civilization belonged to? Was it the Nile River and the continent of Africa? Absolutely. That was a very good answer. Let's take a look at this next picture. This is a map of Mesopotamian civilization developed in the area now known as the Middle East. Miss Tiffany, do you know between which two rivers the Mesopotamian civilization was formed? Um, was it the Tigris and Euphrates River? That's right, the Tigris and Euphrates Rivers. All civilizations have large cities with a form of government. Miss Kim, do you know which early civilizations had a city known as Machu Picchu? I think it was the Inca civilization. Very good, that's right. This next picture is hieroglyphs. Ancient Egyptians were the first to develop a system of writing using symbols called hieroglyphs. In this picture, we can see more unusual shapes carved into stone. These are also hieroglyphs. However, these were made by the Mesopotamian civilization and they called their system of writing Cuneiform. This ancient civilization, Mesopotamia, had a government and laws. They used the fo this form of writing to write down their laws, known as the Code of Hammurabi. Well, now let's look at this picture. This is a photograph of snow-covered Himalayan mountains. Wow, those are beautiful mountains. They are, and I bet they're cold, too. The snow-covered peaks are part of the Himalayas a mountain range that stretches for miles across Asia, forming the highest mountain peaks in the world. Miss Tiffany, can you guess what happens to the snow on the peaks when it melts? It turns into water? That's right. The snow turns into water and travels down the mountainside to form rivers in the valleys below. Um, when you say valleys, do you mean like the two points in between the mountains? Yes, that's right. The water from the melting snow of the Himalayas combines with the heavy spring rains, which fills rivers and causes them to regularly overflow their banks. The fertile soil from those rivers, fair riverbeds, spread over and out near nearby fields. As the water floods the valleys, it leaves behind this nutrient-rich soil, perfect for growing crops. I have a great idea. Let's act out the process. Oh. Okay? okay, so we're going to put our hands above our heads and pretend like we're the snow-covered peaks of the Himalayas. Stand up really tall with your fingers touching like the peaks of the Himalayas. Now, let's be the melting snow that rushes into the river. Everyone move your hands toward the floor and make a whooshing sound Whoosh. to represent that melting snow running over the water banks of the fertile soil. That was fun. Great civilizations all around the world have sprung up in river valleys. Taking advantage of the rich fertile soil in these valleys, people learned to grow their own crops. Because of this, people began to stay in one place instead of constantly moving in search of food. Beneath the Himalayan mountains in Asia, along the banks of the in mighty Indus River, one such civilization was born. Every year, snow from the Himalayas melts. The water from the melting snow and the heavy spring rains floods the Indus River, leaving rich soil on the land around the river. More than 4,000 years ago, people spread out across the Indus River Valley, taking advantage of that rich soil. They settled near the river and began to cultivate wheat and barley, peas, dates, melons, and bananas. These people knew that if they wanted to live near the river, they would have to control the floodwaters. They developed ways to control the rising waters by building irrigation canals to hold some of the water back and to release some of the water into the fields when needed. As their communities grew, these people worked together to plan and build permanent cities by the river. 
There were many permanent cities by the Indus River. Not so long ago, archaeologists uncovered Mohenjo-Daro, one of the most thriving cities of the ancient Indus, Indus River Valley. A city enclosed by brick walls, Mohenjo-Daro was designed in a small square grid-like pattern. The citadel, the fortress of the city's center, housed its leaders, who were members of the ruling class that performed government duties. Beyond the citadel, spreading out in all directions of the city, a web of roads led to the homes of the countless workers. Everyone had a job to do. Some farmed the land outside the city walls, some made bricks from the river's muddy soil, whereas others fashioned their baked bricks into buildings. Fine craft craftsmen designed jewelry and distinctive stone seals carved with pictures of buffalo, elephants, and tigers. Archaeologists uncovered many of these stone seals, but they are not sure the purpose of the seals. And all over the city, merchants bought and sold their wares. The city's wide streets lined with flat-topped brick buildings were easy for their common bull carts to navigate. The city of Mohenjo-Daro was part of the Indus River Valley civilization. We say that certain groups have a civilization when they have cities with large buildings, divisions of labor, meaning everyone has a job to do, and some form of writing, to name a few things. The city of Mohenjo-Daro had all of these things. In the next lesson, you will hear what it might have been like to live in the city of Mohenjo-Daro, a part of the Indus River Valley civilization. Now that we have read all about the Indus River Valley, let's see what we remember. Let's refer to this anchor chart and we can try to answer some questions. Question one, was the civilization in this read aloud built around a mighty river? If so, which river? Yes, the civilization was built around a mighty river. It was the Indus River. Very good. Question two. On which continent is the Indus River Valley found? Do you know? The Indus River is located on the continent of Asia. Good. So here's question three. What caused the Indus River to flood in the spring? Hmm. Heavy spring rains and snow melting from the peaks of the Himalayas mountain caused the Indus River Valley to flood. That's right. Question four. What did the floodwaters leave behind? Let's see. The floodwaters left behind fertile soil. Perfect. And our very last question for today. Question five. How did this fertile soil help the people living near the river? I remember that one. The fertile soil helped the people near the river by giving them nutrient-rich land on which to cultivate crops. Perfect. That was outstanding. Y'all did a great job at home. It's time to review a very important word that we have heard in the story. The Read Aloud has given us so much information about the early civilization along the Indus River. When reading and listening, we heard that fertile soil from the river's bed spreads out over nearby fields. What type of soil? Fertile. Fertile soil. That's right. Say the word fertile with me. Fertile. Fertile. Fertile means able to produce or producing farm crops or other plant life. Can you use it in a sentence? Sure. After the Nile River floods, fertile soil can be found along its banks. That was great. Thank you. Can you describe what fertile ground might look like? 
And what kinds of things would grow on fertile ground? Try to use that word fertile in a sentence when you tell us about it. Let's see. Fertile ground would be moist and dark and full of nutrients. And many green plants would grow from there. Okay, good. And what is the word we've been talking about today? Fertile. That's right, fertile. We have learned about many new places and an important river. As we close our lesson, we will use the map of Asia. This map is also shows the present day India and Pakistan. During that time period of the read aloud, it was called ancient India. India and Pakistan were one country at that time. The border of these two countries are represented in brown. We will label this area Ancient India. These carrot marks on the map represent the Himalayan mountains. We will use and label these Himalayas. The Indus River also runs through this area. It touches the end of the Himalayas and stretches south towards the Arabian Sea. We will label this the Indus River. Remember, as mentioned earlier in the lesson, the melting snow caps from the Himalayas, along with heavy spring rains, caused the water of the Indus to overflow its banks and flood the surrounding valleys. See this red dot? Located next to the Indus River, this is the city of Mohenjo-Daro. That we heard in the read aloud. Many cities like Mohenjo-Daro were able to form because of the rich soils of the floodwaters left behind. Well, that about wraps it up. But before we leave you, we want to make sure that you have an activity to help you remember what we've learned. So I want you to close your eyes for just a minute. Everybody close their eyes. And think about what you think the Indus River Valley looked like. Now open your eyes. What did it look like? As a follow-up to the lesson, we want you to draw a picture of what you imagined the Indus River Valley would look like. Miss Tiffany, what do you think the Indus River Valley looks like? Um, I imagine it to be beautiful, full of crops, and just an all-around great place to be. That's right. So when you write about the Indus River at home, I want you to take, write at least one sentence using the word for fertile in your sentence. And then we want you to make sure to share it with someone at home. All rights and credits from this lesson belong to Core Knowledge Language Arts. We would like to thank them for publicly sharing these materials. The views and opinions expressed in these lessons are those of the Core Knowledge authors and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the Mississippi Department of Education. Thank you, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.